So in today's day, the tadpoles are going to get fed. Let's frog watch. Okay, thank you for joining me here in Frog Watch. Now, uh, I've uh, come back over the weekend and the tadpoles are much bigger and much more active. And I noticed this little guy is nibbling away at uh, what we thought was maybe a newt egg on the underside of the leaf on this little plant here. You just about make out there's a tadpole uh, nibbling away at that pale white blob on the leaf. Uh, so if that is uh, the, the newt's egg, it doesn't look like we're going to have any newts hatching out because the tadpoles are going to be eating those eggs. I think there's a couple of eggs on that plant. Um, but we'll keep an eye on them. We'll see if they hatch out into anything. Uh, but yeah, the, these tadpoles are getting much more active and they're growing quite a lot over the weekend. Um, so I really think it's time to give them a bit of a, a feed. You can see here there's some more nibbling away at the plants. So that's they've basically been feeding off the algae and the leaves of the plants in here so far. Uh, but I think uh, they're getting to the stage now where they're going to want something else. So this is the process that I go through for feeding. I'm going to pour in some boiling water into this beaker here. And uh, I'm going to uh, feed them some spinach. So let me just put the kettle back and uh, we'll go and grab some of the spinach. I've got a bag over, over here. We uh, open this up and uh, we'll find ourselves a nice leaf. Nothing too big. We, they're not going to eat too much yet because they are still very small. And that should be perfect. I'm going to pop it into the boiling water and I'm just going to poke it around a bit. Now all this does is it just softens up the leaf a little bit because the tadpoles have only got tiny little mouths at the moment. And, um, you know, we just soften it up so it's a little bit easier for them uh, to, uh, to, to bite little bits off. So what I'm going to do is uh, just take this knife and I'm going to cut this into little sections. I'm going to have to put the camera down for this. Okay, so I've cut them into little bits here. And all I'm going to do is just take these uh, little bits of uh, spinach leaf and we're going to pop them into the tank, just float them on the top of the water. And uh, all that will happen is um, they'll just float around for a bit and eventually the tadpoles will notice there's something there. And they should come up to investigate and to have a little nibble and uh, yeah and eat some of the uh, lovely nutritious uh, spinach they uh, absolutely love spinach um, lettuce is a good one as well romaine lettuce is apparently a very good one uh, apparently you're not supposed to feed them iceberg lettuce i'm not entirely sure why um, but quite often for, for looking after invertebrates like um, if you have pet snails or slugs or anything like that apparently you shouldn't feed uh, those sort of things uh, iceberg lettuce now i'm not too sure why uh, it's possible because iceberg lettuce has a very very high water content and is possibly not so nutritious as other lettuce but i could be talking absolute rubbish i'm not a lettuce expert um but yeah but spinach uh, i fed uh, my tadpoles spinach last year and um, they absolutely loved it now at the moment this is the first time that i fed them um, so that it's going to take them a little while to realize that uh, what i've put into the tank is food um, but hopefully over the coming days and weeks they will uh, actually pretty much pounce on it as soon as I put it in. I remember last year they would crowd around a, a little spinach leaf and uh, they would all fight for it and they would just nibble away at it. It, it was really fun to watch. Okay, so here we have our first uh, little feeder. So he's come up there and you can see he's nibbling away at the edge of the leaf there. He's the first one to notice that uh, there's some food in the tank. And uh, you can see they just swim up to it and they um, they have sort of rough little mouths and they sort of tear away at the, the leaf and just nibble off bits of the, of the edge of the leaf. Okay, so we're get, they're getting a little bit more active now. You can see that this, this one here is quite a big one. This one's probably one of my biggest tadpoles in the tank. And uh, he's uh, certainly latched on to this, uh, the edge of the leaf and he's nibbling away. We have another couple over this side as well. Looks like he's just swam away. And uh, I think we have some more uh, over this side. No, there's, some, there's some nice tadpoles there. You can see that they quite often swim upside down. These sort of belly up there. They like to uh, come to the surface of the water and, and gulp little bits of air. And here we have another one just swimming past. There is one sort of nibbling on the underside of that leaf there. And we have a little bit more activity over here. There's a couple of them uh, attacking this leaf over here. So they've definitely noticed some of the spinach and they're definitely becoming interested in it. So what I will do is um, 
I will remove any uneaten spinach because uh, it will start rotting in the water and it will make the water dirty. So uh, if there's anything sort of unlef uh, uneaten then you should remove it after a while. Okay, so let's have a look at the pond outside. You can see they have amassed around the edge of the pond there. They're all clinging onto the side, they're eating uh, the algae and things off the side of the pool, and there's a few sort of clumps in the middle here. Now it looks like I needn't be uh, too worried. Uh, previously I was sort of very worried about um, all the jelly, but that all seems to have kind of disappeared and the tadpoles have dispersed quite nicely. Uh, they, they do like this corner up here, and there's a big clump over the side as well. and. Um, they sort of they sort of clump around and school around uh, in various places on the pond. If you actually look over here very carefully, there's a newt. That's one of the newts we saw one of those in the other episode. But that one there is uh, swimming about, and he should just disappear under this uh, little sort of lily there. There he goes. So uh, yeah, I really want to have a look, look at one of those up close at some point uh, in the future. Um, there is uh, still a big clump of undeveloped eggs there, um, but that's that's perfectly normal. Not all the eggs get fertilised. But you can see how they sort of clump around. There's a mass of them right there. Um, but they, they seem to be able to disperse fairly comfortably. And you can see all the most of the jelly has uh, sort of dispersed and either been eaten or it's just degraded or sunk or, you know, one way or another it's gone and uh, the tadpoles have free range to swim around in this pond now. So I'm pretty happy uh, with how things are. And uh, I thought what we'd do is have a little bit of a pond dip um, I'm going to um, get a net and have a little bit of a scoop and just see if we can scoop up anything interesting. There's a snail floating on the water there. That's quite a big one. Got quite a few of those in there. Okay, so I've put some pond water into this tank. Uh, there's plenty of tadpoles in there already. Uh, these things will all be returned to the pond uh, once uh, once we've had a look. Okay, so I've had a bit of a scoop with my net, and I'm going to see if we can find anything interesting uh, in here. Uh, obviously, there's the tadpole swimming around, but there are some other things in here. I think, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there is a small, I don't know if it's a water flea or something, sort of flicking about over there. So sort of very small, darting about in the water. Not entirely sure whether there's some sort of uh, underwater water flea, something like that. Uh, now, there, I have seen a few other things crawl around in here. I'm going to see if I can uh, scoop around and see if there's anything interesting. We've got uh, another snail on the other side of this leaf. I don't think there's anything else attached to this leaf. No, I'll put that back in the pond. We'll get that out of the way. You can go back. And uh, yeah, there's definitely some water louse uh, crawling around in there. I'm not too sure if I'll be able to get one out to have a look at it closer. I really do want to have a closer look at some of the water louse. And I did see a um, damselfly nymph in here, but I can't see where that is right now. Uh, now there is something interesting that I want to show you in here. If I can uh, get it out. All right, here we go. I've got it. So this, let me just uh, try and get it into the camera view here. Uh, this is a little shell. Um, it's a freshwater mollusk. It's a, it's a bivalve. Now you know when you go walking down the beach and you pick up shells, Quite often you'll pick up half of one of these creatures. Uh, and obviously they're the sea one. This is a, a freshwater one, so you'll find these in ponds. Now, I was actually very surprised to find these uh, in the pond last year. Um, I didn't realise there were freshwater pond varieties. I thought, you know, I guess probably rivers and things, but I didn't realise you get them in ponds. Okay, so I've tipped out uh, the creatures and uh, I've just kept a few. There's quite a lot of these uh, bivalves. I was amazed at how many there were. And I've got a couple of these water louse. Now, the water louse are really interesting. I want to have a closer look at those. Um, but yeah, there are absolutely loads of the um, bivalves. Oh, and there is the uh, damselfly nymph. If I can get it to move. There we go. You can just sort of see it there. It's a quite small one. They, they do get a lot bigger than that. And um, we saw one of those in the, in the first episode, I think. Now this one's brilliant. Uh, this one is a nice big water louse. Uh, they're also called water slaters, uh, water hogs, something or other. I forget the, the names now, but um, I'll try and get a close look at that one. Let's try and get this one into uh, into the tube so we can have a closer look. Let's try and scoop them up. And uh, this one's actually quite surprising. Um, I had a look, in, uh, look up uh, some of the behaviour of this. And uh, you should be able to see, uh, it's a bit difficult, um, but there are actually two in here. There's a big one and sitting on top of a little one. 
Now the big one on top is a male and he's protecting the female underneath. The female is a smaller one underneath. Now what he's doing is protecting it to stop other males coming near it because he wants to mate with her. Um, now uh, what he's waiting for is her to molt her shell because at the moment he can't mate with her but uh, when she's, once she's molted and she's gone soft uh, he will then actually be able to mate. Um, and um, yeah, you can just about see the smaller one under there. Yeah, so so he's protecting her to stop other males coming anywhere near. He's sort of claimed his his territory, and uh, he's going to be mating with her uh, as soon as she molts her shell. Uh, yeah, so that's absolutely fascinating. So we're going to put them two lovebirds in our tank, and uh, we'll see how they develop. All right, so yeah, yeah. Let's have another quick uh, look at the the bivalve here. So this is a, a freshwater mollusk. I was absolutely surprised at how many there were. Just in one scoop of my net, there were really quite a lot left at the bottom of this little tank. So um, that's absolutely fascinating. Now there is another. Here we go. Yeah, here's there's another uh, water louse, and this one again is another interesting one. If I can get this right. Uh, place you see underneath there's a sort of a pale creamy yellow blob underneath a body this one's a female who has already mated this one's basically pregnant uh, that blob under the um, sort of the belly there is uh, a brood pouch and uh, so the eggs are inside there and she'll keep hold of that uh, until they mature and then they will hatch out into a miniature uh, miniature um, water louse so we're going to stick her in our tank as well and we can actually have some babies and there we go. Right, well I think that's about all for today. So we've fed our tadpoles, we've had a look at some of the other life in the pond, and we've added some water mouse into our tank. I'm quite excited by it, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.